This time, things got muddy and nasty in Maryland, with two of the biggest names in the sport kept off the overall podium. In Utah, dry and over 100 degrees, with the championship changing hands when it was all over. ATV MX went up north to a land of a thousand lakes, with one rider jumping away with a 1-1 sweep, only on the Racer X Show. Welcome to the last day of June 2015. Wow, already. Thanks for checking us out. This is the Racer X Show. I'm Greg, and we're going to update you on what happened in MotoGP, plus some ISDE fundraising news. So here we go. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by Acherubis, Soul, and Passion, and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. Let's start the show off with the motocross segment presented by Acherbys and a very interesting day for the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship. We expected heavy rain for Saturday's races. What we got was some overnight and in the morning. So the track was muddy. It sprinkled throughout the day until the heavy stuff hit just before the final moto, 450 Moto 2. After a two hour delay, we went racing. Here's Jason Wygant and Grant Langston with the full story. About a half hour south of Washington, D.C., we are in Southern Maryland for the Geico Motorcycle Bud's Creek National, the halfway point of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing. Under very bizarre circumstances, here's your Lucas Oil Race Recap 250 Moto 1 at Bud's Creek. Uh, yeah, the conditions immediately claiming riders, the 157 Air Plessinger and a bunch of others down. Plessinger would not finish this one. Then Sim Cirillo and Muscan, two of the big hitters, come together their buddies off the track and ride together a lot, but Muscan was not happy about this. Cost him some points. Yeah, you see him waving at uh, Cinturello. The only thing is. I think of Cinturello came up the inside and they made contact. But then, right here, battle for the lead. Martin against Martin, Jeremy and Alex. j -Mart takes the lead from his brother, keeping those goggles on, really helping with vision. You see Alex having to back off, avoid the roost. And then right here, we're not sure what happens. I think just an innocent stall, but just enough to allow his brother to get through. And he kept looking over saying, is that really Jeremy? Is that the leader? Is he done? Yes, he was. <laughs> Jeremy second and for the first time ever for him and his team. Uh, Martin has his figured finish second and first. Osborne holds on for another podium. Muscan salvages seventh. In this uh, final 250 moto of the day, it was crazy. Adam Cincerullo here in the green, number 50, grabs the whole shot. Yeah, the track is messy. You can see the mud starts flying. A couple riders went down. Marvin Muscan on the 25 gets to second, putting some heat on AC, and then Adam dumps it and allows Muscan to take the lead away. Cincerullo had a bad lap after that, and that would allow Jeremy Martin to catch him. But then Martin would make some mistakes and go backwards. Through all this, Muscan pulls away, wins the moto, but he finished seventh in the first moto earlier in the day. So you're figuring no chance he's gonna win the overall, but everyone else had problems. Jeremy Martin slipped back to sixth. Alex Martin finished seventh. You add that all up, that makes Muscan today's winner with a seventh and a first. That was the best overall combined score. Since Cerullo finishes second, Alex second overall, so close. Here's your overall results. How about that? <laughs> Who would have thought it would come down to seventh? But that's, the that's, that's what happens in these mud races. Seven one for the overall, and Jeremy not quite able to get up there, but still a good solid points day. Here's your race recap from the first 450 moto here today at Bud's Creek. Ken Roxon, aggressive move here, had to get around Christophe Porcel because he wanted to run with Ryan Dungey, who is leading this thing right from the start. But what's surprising is late in the race, Roxon having his troubles, and Porcel would repass him with about two laps to go, take second place away. That was really committed right there. Just grabbed a handful down the hill, got to the inside, made the pass. But for Roxon, his troubles would continue now you see Bosch and Baggett lining up. And look at this, just a power slide up the inside in the mud. Bam Bam gets it through. And Baggett also behind Roxon would make the pass, pushing the champ from second to fifth. And through it all, Ryan Dungey led every single inch of it. Motosport.com hole shot all the way through to the checkered flag. Here are your results from this moto. We mentioned that Porcel and Barsha pushed, uh, and Baggett pushed it up rocks into fifth. Tickle, his teammate, holds on for sixth. Anderson, not a good start, ends up seventh. Will Hahn in the top ten again, and Brayton wins that battle with Pike to finish ninth. 
they didn't even think they'd get this race in at one point. It was so muddy and rainy. Skies cleared, we went for it, and yeah. There was still some mud out there, but this is typical motocross. Justin Barsha to the early lead. Ryan Dungey in second throws it away. Did not get over that first jump. Jesse Wetland plows into him, and Dungey had his work cut out for him from there, coming from about last in about the worst conditions to do it. He would finish 12th. Barsha wins the moto, and with it, the overall for the day. He had a third in the first moto, and yeah, he can roost everyone involved with that team. They will wear that <laughs> mud proudly. They probably won't even clean themselves off. They are so happy to get this victory. First win of the year for them. Here are your overall results. Porcel second, Baggett third. Here's the points. I cannot believe this. Through yeah. all the drama, Dungey and Roxon each score 34 <laughs> points today. No change in the standings. Barsha, though, up to third. I have to send a huge shout out to the fans who stuck around post massive thunderstorm and tornadoes in the area thing. When things calm down a bit, Stuff like this happened. Oh my God. <laughs> that is how you have fun, folks. And it was strange not to see Ryan Dungey or Ken Roxon at the post-race press conference. But I am telling you something. Bam Bam's childlike enthusiasm for his first overall on a Yamaha was infectious. He was BMX whipping it, yelling at his mechanic Ben as he rode by, and he told us that his confidence is building, and he feels that he can run up front in the dry. So I am looking forward to seeing that. Pro Motocross is in action at Redbud this 4th of July weekend. Check out the coverage Live Moto 1 on MAV TV. That coverage begins at 1 p.m. East. That runs for two hours. Then on the big NBC network beginning at 4 p.m., we'll have two hours of live second moto coverage. Make sure you set your DVR if you're out watching fireworks. Want a new 450? Make sure you're entered for this chance of a lifetime. You can win a brand new 2015 450 motocross bike of your choice from Honda, Husqvarna, Kawasaki, KTM, Suzuki, or Yamaha. And all the proceeds go towards funding the Asterix Mobile Medical Center. How? Easy. Head to winna450.com and you can purchase as many raffle tickets as you'd like before August 21st and sit back and wait for the winner to be chosen on August 22nd at the Bud Light Ironman National in Crawfordsville, Indiana. It's as easy as that. The winner doesn't need to be present to claim their prize and will be contacted shortly after the announcement to choose their preferred brand. What are you waiting for? Get your tickets now at winna450.com and help support the Asterix Mobile Medical Center today. And that's our motocross segment presented by a chair beast. Now our road race segment presented by Yoshimira. Where over the weekend, Moto America paid a visit to Miller Motorsports Park in Tuella, Utah for round six of their championship, where it was hot, hot, hot. I mean, we're talking over 103 degrees ambient temperature at race time. Monster Energy Graves Superbike racer Josh Hayes told me on the phone yesterday, quote, it was like racing in a hair dryer unquote. And how would that affect racing? Well, this is why we do the highlights, folks. Once Superbike Race 1 got going, it took a few laps to sort things out. At the sharp end, we had two powerhouse teams out front. The likes of number one, Hayes, number six, Cameron Bobier, Hayes' teammate, and the Yoshimira Suzuki duo of number 95, Roger Hayden, and number 85, Jake Lewis. For Hayden, his bike was just not feeling right, and he eventually faded back to third. After this pass from Bobier, the Californian would set after Hayes, for the number one spot. The teammates would be this close for the rest of the race and pass and repass each other until the final lap. Turn five, Hayes grabs the binders late and forced himself on pass. Cam might have had a shot, but the strongest part of the track for Hayes, the final turn. The champ got the drive and the race won victory. Lewis still working hard in his rookie season, finished ahead of KTM HMC's Chris Fillmore on an aging RC8. But Hayes closing the points gap is happy. It's uh, an easier race to lose than it is to win. So I had to do everything right on the last lap, and it's really a bit of a roll of the dice, you know? And I think that the next race will be a lot of the same. It's gonna be both of us up there and uh, kind of playing cat and mouse, and two, who can make the right move on the right lap and pull out a win. After race one, Roger's Yosemira crew found something not right in the shock. They fixed it, and Roger was right in the fight. And up front, it was number one and number 95 that would go after it for some of the race. But. After this draft and pass, it was all Hayes. Hayden was experiencing some power loss. The heat, no doubt the culprit. The new Yamaha R1s have liquid and oil coolers that help keep things nice and right in the motor. When the flag flew, it was all Josh Hayes. 
Bobier reduced the damage done by Hayes' double win with a second place. As for the points, while Hayes takes over from his young teammate, the crafty veteran just playing his game right now. Three rounds to go. Make sure you check out the one-hour highlight show on CBS Sports Network Sunday. Coverage begins at 6 p.m. East. That's 5 p.m. for you folks in Chicago. MotoGP had their traditional race in Holland at the Assen Circuit over the weekend, and what we saw was awesome. First off, number 46 Valentino Rossi put his movie star Yamaha on pole, his first since Valencia last season. The nine times champ battled it out until the final set of corners with reigning champ Repsol Honda's Marc Marquez. In the final chicane, the two came together as Marquez was trying to grab the lead. It forced Rossi to the gravel trap where he stood it up and pinned it. He made it to the line first for the win and 25 points. Rossi's teammate Lorenzo finished third. That further extended Rossi's points lead, which is still a very slim 10. Get on to MotoGP.com to check out the video. It was so sick. And that is our road race segment presented by Yoshimira. And now for four wheels and the Mountain Dew ATV Motocross National Championship. Can you believe it? We're three quarters of the way through the season. Stop number seven of 10 paid a visit to Spring Creek MX Park in Millville, Minnesota where we're waiting to see if the likes of Joel Hetrick, Thomas Brown, Josh Upperman, Jeffrey Rastrelli, heck anyone at this point, can stop the freight train that is Chad Weenan. To the action we go. Now Spring Creek is famous for its rough and physically demanding layout with such notorious obstacles as the sand whoops. These lap after lap challenges took a toll on the entire AMA Pro ATV field and ended up claiming championship contender Joel Hetrick with a big crash in practice that left the Hetrick Racing Corrosion Specialties rider battered and bruised for the motos. But that didn't stop the 88 from grabbing the SSI decals hole shot when the gate dropped for moto number one. But Hetrick's lead wouldn't last long as Weenan Motorsport Max's tires Chad Weenan took advantage of a strong start of his own to move into first on the opening lap and quickly establish a multi-second lead. Hetrick tried to keep pace but was unable to keep winning close, allowing the defending champ to cruise to his fourth Moto win of the season by just over 14 seconds. In Moto2, Hetrick showcased his toughness and resiliency yet again, jumping out to another hole shot. But as was the case in the first Moto, Hetrick's early lead was short-lived as Wienan got another great start and got around Hetrick on the opening lap. Hetrick again did his best to keep Wienan in sight but the Yamaha rider was on a mission and marched his way to another dominant moto win by over 15 seconds. Hetrick easily claimed second while Rastrelli, back from his crash two weeks ago, a solid 3-3. But it was Wienan's first 1-1 of the year. I just had it, I had it going on and, uh, today and I just had a good feeling about it and uh, track suited me so well, nice, brutal, rough and uh, really looking forward to uh, you know, uh, Unadilla next and uh, taking one moto at a time. Wienan's domination moves him 21 points ahead of Hetrick with only three rounds remaining. Someone better step it up or Wienan's going to take his fourth. How about a little off-road news? We told you a few shows back that the international six days enduro team is heading to Slovakia in early September and that it costs a lot of money to participate like $12,000 in gas, $1,500 in water. Most riders pay their own way to attend. Well, on June 19th, just before last week's GNCC at Snowshoe, there was a fundraiser for the team. Here's a little video about that. All right, it's uh, Antti here. Um, we're at the seventh hole here at the Ravens Golf Course having an ISD golf fundraiser. Uh, having a good day here. A lot of fun playing with a group of good guys uh, from uh, GNCC Racing, um, ATV and uh, bike riders coming together and uh, playing for a good cause. Uh, so far things has gone well, uh, our whole fundraising event and, uh, and the, the team overall, you know, we have the whole uh, junior and trophy team riders here playing and having a good time and hopefully uh, raising a bunch of money to uh, get us over to Slovakia this year. No, it's good, you know, it's uh, one time everybody gets together for a year to play golf and it's uh, for a good cause for the six days fund this year and I'm, uh, you know, excited to be a part of that for sure, it's uh, one of the greatest races I do all year. and. Uh, Looking forward to this year doing it in uh, Slovakia. The results, well, for the golf team's perspective anyway, Caleb Russell and his pops Jeff, along with John Henry and Scott Kiger from Coastal Drilling won the overall. Kiger's Coastal Drilling will be the primary sponsor for the team, which is great news. 
and the golf outing raised around $33,000 for the team. But you can also help in the fundraising. If you go to the ISTE page on AmericanMotorcyclist.com, you can buy a t-shirt with all the proceeds going to support the team. So be a part of what might be the winning nation's team. It's our nation's birthday this weekend, so go watch some racing. Pro Motocross is only an hour and a half from Chicago, two and a half hours from Indy, three hours from Detroit. Redbud is the spot. And on the way south side of Illinois, AMA Pro Flat Track stops in DeCoin at the State Fairgrounds in the evening. Great racing there. The WMX series sticks around Redbud for Sunday's racing. You won't want to miss that. So go out and have some fun watching motorcycle racing. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, Soul and Passion, and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. That's it for us this time. We hope you enjoyed it. Share this video with everyone you know and don't know. And go buy the ISDE t-shirt for yourself and your friends. It's always good to give. Okay, that's it for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show and Racer TV. I'm Greg. We thank you for watching and make sure you keep it locked here all the time because we are all racing all the time. Happy birthday, United States. Bye-bye.